going on, Warriors fans? Before we jump into today's show, be sure to hit that subscribe button here on Golden State Warriors today, whether it's myself, Chase Sr., or someone else here at Chat Sports. We're going to continue to update you guys with the latest Warriors news and rumors. Big playoff push coming uh, before the postseason gets here, and then offseason coverage and beyond. That is our promise to you. So subscribe, enjoy the move it, join the movement here at Golden State Warriors today. Coming up on today's show, myself and Chase Sr., we broke down ESPN's latest NBA mock draft. Find out who the Warriors land in the 2022 draft according to this ESPN mock. Let's get into ESPN's latest NBA mock draft chase, final third of the season, er, uh, part of the NBA season. So mock drafts are starting to come out. No Let's break it down here. Chet Holmgren, number one pick, going to Detroit. Can you imagine him pairing up with Cade Cunningham and having those two guys as your two building blocks for a franchise that's been down in the dumps for a long while? Really good player. Of course, you worry about his size. We'll take a look at his numbers here just momentarily. Jabari Smith going number two out of Auburn. He's had a great year under Bruce Pearl. Uh, Pelo Bencaro, he's been really good for Duke. Jaden Ivey out of Purdue has really climbed up draft boards of late. And then A.J. Griffin, another Dukey in Coach K's final year. They have a realistic shot to win yet another national championship. Now, the consensus top three prospects in this draft class, it's Chet, it's Jabari, it's Palo. All of these players are really, really good. And bunch, uh, all of them give you a variety of different skill sets for Chet, He's a big guy who, yes, he lacks size, but can stroke the three, shooting around 40% from beyond the yard. A very good rebounder, can handle for his size and be a rim protector, even though he does lack some muscle. Jabari Smith, really good, averaging 16 points per game, little shy of seven rebounds, shooting 43.5% from the floor. You'd like to see that rise, but... For the Dukey man, 46% from the floor, 16 and a half points. The first college player, by the way, to be involved in the My Team method on NBA 2K. Mm. You can play him in these video games now, oh. which is actually pretty cool for him. Name, image, and likeness has really changed the game. Very cool. We'll keep it moving here. Who's the top prospect in this draft class? Man, I wish I could put about 35 pounds on Chet Holmgren. <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, that would make me feel a lot better about him because I think he's the most skilled player in this draft. Let us know what you guys think. Top prospect for 2022. We'll go 6-10 through 10 here uh, with uh, Jalen Duran out of Memphis going to the Thunder at number 6. Yeah, he goes to the Thunder as Sam Presti just continues to have a bunch of draft assets at his disposal. Johnny Davis has been playing really good basketball for Wisconsin this year. Shade and Sharp, up and down year with Kentucky, but has all of the talent to be a very good player. Upside selection there. If he does end up going to the San Antonio Spurs, they could use another key young player. Keegan Murray out of Iowa. He's risen up some draft boards as well, going to Portland at number nine. And then Ty Ty Washington, also out of Kentucky, also going to the Portland Trail Blazers at number 10. You take a look at what Duran has been able to do under Penny Hardaway this year. Penny Hardaway has done a great job of recruiting a yes. lot of really good players to come to Memphis that hasn't necessarily translated to a lot of wins, but Jalen's a really good player with some good size and athleticism this year, 11 and a half points, a little less than eight rebounds, two plus blocks per game, which can really translate to the NBA level, connecting on a route, 64 and a half percent of his field goals. He is not going to light it up from distance. I'd like to see him develop his shot just a bit, but the upside and potential are certainly there. And for Johnny Davis, for Wisconsin this year, he's been one of the best bucket getters in yep. this year's draft class. 20 and a half points per game. You take a gander at the field goal percentage at 44.8 and the three-point percentage at 33 even. I'd like to see that increase just a bit, but he can really fine twine and put the biscuit in the basket. So let's compare these two guys. We just showed you the numbers. Chase broke down their games a little bit. Better prospect type Jalen or type MEM for Jalen Duran or type WIS for Johnny Davis, the Wisconsin uh, player versus the Memphis player. Let us know. If you had to pick one guy right now, who are you leaning with? I like Johnny Davis because I think the most important quality right now is being able to score the basketball, and yep. Johnny Davis does that better than Jalen Duran. Especially at all three levels. Get yep. your votes in on that one. Hey, by the way, subscribe, obviously, to our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Chat Sports TV, which is what... Uh, you're probably watching this on right now. Hit that big red button. But variety of team channels, Chase, as well. The Lakers report, which 
is across 41,000 subscribers. We'll cycle through these links below, youtube.com slash Lakers TV. Golden State Warriors t today recently crossed 27,000 subs. Go check that out, youtube.com slash Warriors TV. Dallas Mavericks today at almost 16,000, youtube.com slash Mavs TV as well. And then three of our smaller channels that are starting to grow pretty quickly, especially our Knicks and Sixers channel. Those one are closing in on 5,000. We also have a Celtics channel at about 8,500 subs. Again, cycling through the links, youtube.com slash Celtics TV, youtube.com slash Knicks TV, and then youtube.com slash 76ers TV. Six team channels for the NBA. And hey, as these those continue to grow, if you're fans of other teams, then we'll continue to be able to create more channels in the future. So support those, and uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Let's go 11 through 15 here now, Chase. Who stands out in this bunch? Yeah, of these players, I really like EJ Liddell. And all of these players, they bring a blend of different skills to the NBA level. Benedict, Matherin, out of Arizona, Dyson Daniels from the G League Ignite. We continue to see players who go the G League route getting opportunities right away at the NBA level, like Jonathan Kaminga, as well as Jalen Green. They were teammates with the G League Ignite. Uh, Ochai Agbajabi. O o Ochai Abaji. Yeah, help me out there. This classic Bill Self player, four-year college player, Naismith finalist this year. He's just one of those guys that stuck around, and he's a 25-point scorer now. So. Yeah, and, and Marjan Beauchamp out of the G League Ignite, too. Really, I want to focus in here, though, on EJ Liddell. Him going back to Ohio State has had a similar impact of Ayo Desumu going back to Illinois mm. last year. Both of these guys hail from the great state of Illinois, used to work in Springfield, watched both Ayo and EJ Liddell play some high school basketball, but you look at how EJ Liddell's work in the lab has paid off and him just coming back to college for a third year has paid big dividends. The numbers are up all across the board. And because of that, he's gone from a back half of the first round guy last year, maybe even second round guy to being a borderline lottery pick this year. He's a little bit undersized, but he makes up for that with his ability to knock down some three point shots, 16 points per game up to 19 and a half rebounds up from less than seven to seven Love and a half blocks. blocks per game yep. up from one to two and a half field goal percentage up to 51 and three point percentage. Yes, it's shorter from the college ranks, right? But 39% from three is really impressive for a forward who in today's NBA can play a little bit of small ball four, maybe even small ball five, yep. and you can still get away with him being on the floor in that way. I think he definitely fits into this category as a sleeper prospect because people forget about those three and four year college players. Well, a lot of them become good players in the NBA, as we've seen in recent years uh, with uh, the Desmond Baines of the world, the Ayo DeSumo's of the world, guys who went back to college. Who's the most slept-on prospect in this class? Maybe EJ Liddell is a guy to keep an eye on. 16 through 20 here. Tell us a little bit about this grouping. Yeah, Tari Eason, Kendall Brown, Walker, uh, Walker Kessler, excuse me, Usman Diang, and Gene Montero. What's kind of the common theme here, especially at picks 19 and 20? The New Zealand Breakers, you go international there, and you take a shot on a prospect who might have some upside in this back half of the first round, and then Gene Montero, G League Ignite. So the G League Ignite, it's pretty interesting. Like, you look at that team kind of like you look at Kentucky. You were betting on players being better at the NBA level than they were either with Kentucky or with the G League Ignite because they simply weren't given as many opportunities on more stacked rosters. So you're taking a little bit of a gamble and you're unsure as to how that game translates. But of course, at this point, the ability in the first round is certainly on the table. How do you guys value draft picks? You think it's overrated, underrated? You know, you've got Sam Presti, who's got about 30 first round picks over the next five years. Slight exaggeration, but he's got a bunch. Uh, you think it's overrated? Type Y for yes. If you're like, no, draft picks are uh, good to have. Type N for no. I like having them, Chase, because even if you don't use them, you can flip them for good players. You so, can. Uh, Lakers I, I, would like to have a few. Les Snead doesn't care at the NFL level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so let us know, yes or no. 41 through 25 as we break down ESPN's latest mock draft. Not Nikola Jokic, Chase. Nikola Jovic. Yeah, he's one of the best international prospects in this year's class. I like his 
size. I like his ability to do a bunch of things on the floor. I think he could rise up some draft boards. Jaden Hardy, another player from the G League. Ignite Mark Williams out of Duke going to Milwaukee there at number 23. Trevor Keels also out of Duke going to the Chicago Bulls. I like their collection of young talent in addition to some players who are obviously established veterans. Patrick Baldwin Jr., really cool story. Goes to Milwaukee, obviously not a basketball powerhouse. As recent as earlier this year, a couple months ago, a couple years ago, he wasn't on any draft radars. He's legitimate and should be taken as such to go in the first round here. If you love the NBA draft, like this video. We love it here at Chat Sports. Chase and I will be live whenever it happens. Uh, what is that? First week of June, second week of June, sometime yep. in there. Uh, we'll be live. We'll be breaking down every single pick. Like the video. And, of course, between now and then, tons of draft rumors, mock drafts. We'll probably do some prospect breakdown. So uh, keep it here with Chat Sports. All right, let's wrap up this ESPN NBA mock draft uh, 26 through 30 here. Anybody stand out here? Um, J.D. Davison's hair goes to Alabama, <laughs> probably the best head of hair in this year's draft class. Kennedy Chandler for a Tennessee team, really good player. Shout out to Petey. Blake Wesley out of Notre Dame. Notre Dame has kind of fallen under the radar. They've had a sneaky good year. They've had a sneaky good year, but the last couple of years, they haven't really yeah. been as good as they've been in the past. So a player like Blake Wesley can be slept on a little bit. Yeah, no doubt about it. Who has a legitimate prospect who didn't go in round one? Who is a legitimate prospect, I should say? Are there any names uh, on your radar yet uh, that didn't get into this ESPN mock? <sighs> Man. Um, it's, it's early in the it's, process. It's so though. early. Um, you know, I like some of those players at the end of the first round. I think they could slip in future mocks into that second round. So in that sense, like some of those players could be sneaky. Here's a name you know, and he doesn't really fit the modern NBA, but Kofi Coburn. Oh, yeah. See a guy That's worth a good taking one. in round two? Look, like he, he can can't score. do anything outside of putbacks, dunks. He's probably one of the better polarizing athletes in this year's draft class. Blocking shots, great rebounder. He is so, so gifted and so strong. He just can't do anything outside Doesn't of some of those limited skills. He's yeah. an old school big, not a modern day big. Because of that, I think he slides into the second, but worthy of a second round selection for sure. Physical dominance for sure. Hit that subscribe button like we mentioned because uh, more NBA news, rumors, draft coverage here at Chat Sports. And uh, hey, if you enjoyed this video, we'll do more mock draft coverage in the future.